In previous episodes, we've shown you some of the power that is Postman, but if you're not a gooey sort of person, or if you're working in an operating system that doesn't have a good Postman, then you might need to make use of Curl. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, I am going to take you through the very basics of the fabulous utility that is Curl. Uh, so Curl is a utility that allows you to make HTTP requests uh, right from the command line, and it's very powerful, lots of options, uh, far too much to talk about in a single episode, but I will go through some of the basics here. So you will see probably curl used in a lot of examples of APIs where they'll tell you, hey, here's the curl command for doing this. Uh, and if you're interested in how your Postman stuff might convert to that, there is a button in Postman that you can extract your scripts and run them as curl scripts. So I'm gonna start off here in Windows PowerShell. Um, I'll type curl here. So, Curl on PowerShell is a sneaky trap. Um, there is an alias that is curl, but it doesn't actually mean curl. So it's actually an alias for invoke web request. Uh, this is a terrible idea by somebody some years ago. I, I'd like you to share with us honestly, though, how you feel about <laughs> Tell it. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> So I feel like you're holding back. So the the reason I don't like it is that like curl is a legitimate utility that is used and it has very specific command line parameters that you would use for it. Those command line parameters do not work at all on the Windows version of it. So if you have written a bunch of scripts on Windows using curl uh, and then you try and move to a different operating system, none of them will work because everything you have set up is designed to be actually invoke web request um, and it, this becomes even more problematic now that we've got like bash on windows and proper curl on windows because now when i type curl i don't i don't know what i'm going to get on any particular system uh, anyway we will close this powershell here because we're not going to use fake curl we're going to use real curl uh, so in order to use real curl uh, I happen to have pulled up this handy dandy uh, Ubuntu on Windows thing here. So uh, if you have missed this, uh, this is a way of running Linux binaries actually straight on Windows itself. Uh, so I haven't tried a whole lot of stuff out with it, but from what I've been hearing, it's pretty good and it works quite nicely. Uh, the only things that don't really work on it are stuff that uses like X Windows and that kind of thing. But we have here basically exactly what you would expect to, to find on a Linux system. So I'm going to start here by just running curl without anything. So let's do curl and I will grab HTTPS uh, google.com. All right, so what I've got back from this is a 302 response telling me that this document has moved somewhere else. So this is because I've tried to go to google.com and I'm located in Canada, so it's asked me to go to google.ca. So we can add that, and it wants us to use the www prefix here. So if we hit this, then we get a big giant blob of text that is in fact everything that you would get on the Google homepage. So that's the most basic approach, is to simply issue a get, and uh, you'll get back kind of all of the contents that you would find on a website, and you can pipe that into a file or process it. Uh, now this might not be super useful for getting back web pages, but you could use this against an API to get back a, a blob of JSON or something like that. Uh, one of the more interesting things I think about curl is I'm going to go back to this really simple one here because it's uh, not very long. And I'm going to turn on for Bose. Uh, so this will tell you everything that curl is doing in the background. And if you're interested in kind of how the HTTP protocol works, this is a, a cool learning tool to help you out here. So we start up up here, and I'm gonna make up a few spaces in between here so we can get a good idea of where it starts. Okay, so the first thing it does is it checks the DNS entry here. So it uh, goes out, it does a DNS lookup, uh, and then it's gonna do an SSL handshake here. So we go through this uh, SSL v3 
handshake here in order to do key exchanges to set up a, a symmetric key for doing encryption against the, the other site because this was an HTTPS site you'll see there. Uh, and then we're going to issue a GET request. So this is actually the text that gets sent over the wire. So this is using HTTP 1.1, which is of course a, a text-based protocol. If this was using HTTP 2, uh, this would no longer be a text-based protocol, so you could just read it like this. But anyway, um, we issue a GET request, and we're going to issue it against just the root of that site. Uh, we give it a user agent. Uh, so you can override this user agent, of course, in curl, but by default, it'll actually use the, the curl user agent. Uh, the host name, so if you happen to be hosting multiple websites on this domain, uh, then this host name is what's going to be used to determine which website gets served back to you. Uh, and as the accept header, so this is what I would be interested in receiving back, I'll take anything. Uh, and then the response headers come back to us. It says, uh, yeah, we're going to talk HTTP 1.1. Uh, we found your resource, it's a 302. Uh, it's going to set a cache control header here. So I feel like we haven't talked about caching. So we should do an episode on caching and cache control headers. Uh, but basically, this is saying, this is telling any proxy servers between me and Google uh, that it should cache this stuff as private if it caches it at all. Uh, the, the content type that's going to be coming back, including the character set, uh, where it actually ended up getting it back from, how long the thing is that I can expect to get back, um, uh, the, the date, and some additional headers here. I have no idea what these headers mean. Uh, and then, of course, because it's a 302, it's, it's telling us that we have to go and do another request to find the actual one. So if we were to do this with uh, the correct URL, uh, we should hopefully get back a 200 here. Let's see. Yep, so we do get back a 200. So that's the very simplest approach to this, uh, just doing a simple get. Uh, but we can do some more fun stuff with this uh, against an actual API. So I have here a curl request against the GitHub API. So GitHub provides a pretty robust API for doing all sorts of different things. Uh, and this is a, the public version of this API. So I'm just going to get back uh, my public profile information here. So this gives you kind of a, a blob of JSON here that you could go and process later on, uh, but it gives you kind of a pretty simple overview of what I have on my Git profile. So I have like 66 public repos, which surprises me that I have that many. Uh, but let's say that we wanted to authenticate against this and get a little bit more information out of this. So there's a number of different ways of authenticating against the, the GitHub API. Uh, but probably the easiest way is to go and get yourself a private token so you can get a, a personal access token um, if you drop into your settings here. Uh, so I went off and got one of those earlier and don't worry, I will reset this token as soon as we are done. This is the part where Simon shows us his password. Yeah, well, this is the part where everybody should be happy that there are access tokens and that I don't have to show my incredibly complicated password here. So. What I've got here is I've added a header value into this request. And so I've said it's authorization. The authorization, authorization type is a token. And this giant long string here is the uh, private key that I'm going to use for it. So I will go and I'll get the same URL that I got before, which is my profile. And we'll see if there's any additional information on it. So that looked like it had a little bit more on there. So it has information like what plan I happen to have. Um, and how much disk usage I have and a few other things in here. So this allows us to get like additional information basically all through the use of this header here. So you can add any header that you want to curl just using dash H and you can add multiple headers as necessary. Uh, so headers can contain authorization information or uh, special requests. There's a whole family of like headers that start with X dash uh, which it's my understanding you're not supposed to use x dash anymore, but everybody still does. Uh, so let's try one more here, and we're going to try posting some data to the server here. So 
what I have here in a file is uh, oops, already open. But I have this text file here that contains some information that I would uh, post up to the server to create a new repo. So this is just a, a blob of JSON. And you can do this on the command line too, but it's a little bit simpler to just throw it into a file and include the file in your request. So again, it's going to have the same authentication token stuff that we had before. But I'm going to go and specify that this is a post. So this dash x allows you to specify the verb, basically. So this could be patch or delete or anything like that. Uh, but we're going to do a post here. And I'm going to specify that I want to pass data into it here. Uh, so any data that starts with an at symbol here is understood to be a file from the file system that it wants to, that you're going to suck in and upload, basically. So before we Let's get started there. You can see I've got 72 repos listed here. So I'm going to go and run this here. And that's going to dump out a whole bunch of JSON uh, information that you could use, I guess, somewhere. Um, let's go take a look at our repos now over here. So we're now up to 73. And that brings us this brand new monsters repo here. Uh, that include like a git ignore and a standard readme file. Uh, so it's very simple to do posts using curl as well. Uh, but there is a, a whole suite of fantastic curl tools out there that you can make use of and a good man page on it. So pretty much anything that you can do from a browser, you can do using curl. Uh, so you can put it in your scripts, you can uh, just use it to do quick checks uh, and in a lot of places it's used to document how to use APIs. Uh, I think that's probably everything I wanted to cover on the intro to curl. We can do some more advanced curl later on if people are interested in that. Uh, but that's an episode for another day. Yeah, ask the question if you're interested. So I guess, um, you know, when, when we're looking at using a tool like this in in windows the probably one of the biggest motivations is as you said you know this gives us an opportunity to look a little bit more about the exchange that's happening at the lower level i know like when i was learning git i was actually using source tree at the time and for me i always had there's an option in source tree that said always show me the console and that would give me actually the all of the git statements that were being executed um, so I had a better understanding earlier on. This is kind of that same thing. It helps you learn the protocol a little bit better. Yeah, I think it helps you learn the protocol, but it's also like super useful utility just in general. Yeah, it'll be. Okay. It's nice to be able to use, uh, like you said, a lot of those documentation pages that for public APIs. They'll have curl examples, and it's nice that we can actually use those now on Windows easily. Yeah. Right. Good stuff. Well, thanks everyone for joining us again here on the ASP.NET Monsters. Remember to like, comment, share, and send us an email or put your comments below if you have any questions. Great. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.